Hello friends, this video on human eye and colorful world part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now try to understand how exactly image is formed by the eye. What we already learned the different parts of the eye. So we know that we have an eye lens. But let's see how exactly, where exactly the image is formed by the eye lens. Now the image always has to be formed on the retina. Now why is that so? Now that's because retina is the screen for our eye. Like how we have, now normally when we learnt about the image formation by lenses, we saw that we always had a lens, we had an object and we had a screen and the image is formed on the screen. That's how the normal scenario works with a convex lens. Now for our eye also, we have the eye lens in place and we have this retina which acts as the screen where the image has to be formed. Now we have to ensure that every time the image is formed on the retina. Now since we have a convex lens, now what happens is the image that is formed on the retina that is the screen is an inverted image. We already learned that convex lens whenever the image is considerably away most of the time it produces real inverted image. Now you might ask that okay if real inverted image is formed on the retina then how do we see things erect? That's because our brain then interprets that inverted image as an erect image. So the, the entire uh, process of seeing an object not only depends on our eyes but also on our brain. So brain plays a very important role when we see things. So every time we need to ensure doesn't matter wherever the object is but the image always has to be formed on the retina. Now object can be anywhere, object can be far, object can be near. So how do we ensure that the image is always on the retina? So let us have a look at that. So for that what we do is we change the focal length of the lens because we cannot change the object distance. Let's say I want to see a tree and the tree is far away from me. So I cannot bring the tree near me and then see it. We can't do that, right? So object distance is not under our control. Okay, image distance is also not under our control because retina is at a fixed place and the image has to be formed on the retina. So what is under our control? The lens. Now if somehow we can change the focal length of the lens, in that case the position where the image is formed can also be altered. So if the image is very far away or if the image is quite close, depending on the distance of the so if the object is very far away or the object is very close, depending on the position of the object, we can alter the focal length of the eye lens so that the image is always formed on the retina. So that is the concept that is used inside our eye. So let us try to understand in more detail. So let us say we are trying to see a nearby object. So let us say this is the object that we are trying to see. Now this is our lens. Now what do we know from our basic knowledge on ray diagrams, a ray of light passing parallel to the principal axis, what happens? After passing through the lens, it would pass through the focus of the lens. Now, right now, let us say this is the principal focus for this lens. So after that, it passes through the focus and the ray of light which passes through the optical center of the lens that moves straight after refraction. And then these two rays, they meet at this point where an inverted image is formed. So that is how image formation is taking place right now. And this is our retina. This part is the retina which is the screen. So perfect. In this case, when I am seeing a nearby object, things are working absolutely fine. Now, if the object is not located quite close and it is located far away, in that case what would happen? Now, if the object is very far away, as per our knowledge on lens, we know that when an object is very far away from a convex lens, let's say this is convex lens, when the object is far away, the rays would be coming parallel from that object and after refraction they will meet at a point and that point is the principal focus. So this is when the object is at infinity. So in this case also if we want to view an object which is far away and if we assume that the lens will remain like this, in that case where will the image be formed? The image will be formed here at the principal focus because the rays after passing through the lens will meet at the principal focus. 
but that would not satisfy our criteria because we want the image to be formed on this screen. Now for image to be formed on this screen, the principal focus should lie on the screen. So when the focus is lying on the screen, then it should be fine. So what do we do? When you are viewing a very far off object, we change the focal length of the lens. Now how we change the focal length of the lens? By changing its width. Here you see a fat lens. If you look at the thickness of the lens, you see a fat lens. But here when you look at the thickness, it is comparatively a thin lens. Now when the thickness of the lens changes, its focal length also changes. How? Let us try to understand. Let's say you have a lens like this, which is almost straight. So that means if it is almost like very little curve, what does that mean? That means it is part of a circle which is quite big. Right? So this circle will have the radius somewhat like this. So this would be the focal length. This distance would be the focal length. Now let us say you have a lens which is like very much curved like this. So in this case, if the lens is more curved, that means this is part of a smaller sphere. Therefore, for this, the radius of curvature would be less and therefore the focal length would be lesser. So whenever you have a fat lens, a fat lens will always have lesser focal length. So fat lens means less focal length and thin lens would always mean more focal length. Now here if we are able to make the lens thinner, in that case its focal length will increase. So earlier the focal length was somewhere here, now the focal length increased and the focus shifted to somewhere here. So in this case what happened? The rays of light, parallel rays of light came from an object which is far away and after passing through the lens they met at the focus. And where is the focus? That is on the retina. So the image is formed on the retina. So you see if we are able to change the thickness of the lens, then we are able to ensure that whether the object is near or the object is far away, we will always get the image on the retina. So now our next challenge is how do we ensure or who will take care of the fact that the thickness of the lens will change depending on the location of the object. How will we change the thickness of the lens? So let us see. So who alters the thickness of the eye lens? Now that is done by the ciliary muscles. Now if you look at the structure of the eye very closely, this is the lens. So this one is the lens. The lens is connected to the ciliary muscles here. So here you have the ciliary muscles and you have these muscles on both end of the lens. So these are also ciliary muscles. These are also ciliary muscles. Now, the ciliary muscles and the lens, they are connected via certain ligaments which are called suspensory ligaments. So here you have the ciliary muscles here and then you have these ligaments here and then it connects to the lens. Similarly, here you have the ligaments here and this side you have the ciliary muscles. Now, as we know that muscles are always capable of contracting. So muscles can contract, muscles can relax. Now as the muscles contract or relax, what would happen? The corresponding ligaments will also move and as the ligaments move, this can impact the thickness of the lens because if the ligaments, they get stretched, let us say the ligaments get stretched this side, this side. So what will happen? It will try to stretch the lens from both sides. So in that case, the lens will tend to become thinner because somebody is trying to push the lens from this side, somebody is trying to push the lens from this side. So it will become thinner. But when the ligaments are kind of relaxing, when the ligaments are set free, then the lens will also be set free. Nobody is pushing it from anywhere and the lens will become a fat lens. So this is how we will be able to control the thickness of the lens. Now when the object is nearby, what happens is the ciliary muscles contract. Now when the ciliary muscles contract, now these muscles contract, that means what happens? The muscles are contracting, therefore these ligaments which are connected to the muscles, these ligaments slacken, they are like set free. Because of which nobody is trying to push this lens. So the lens is also very free, nobody is pushing it. So the lens is like taking all its, all its space and it is like thickened enough, it is a fat lens. And when the lens is fat, it has a lesser focal length. 
and therefore focal length is only till here so this would be the focal length in this case and that's how we are able to see the image the image is formed on the retina now what happens when the object is far away the moment the object is far away these ciliary muscles will expand now when the ciliary muscles expand what happens the ciliary muscles take a lot of space because they have now expanded now when they take a lot of space what happens to these ligaments now they have taken a lot of space now these ligaments tend to make some space for itself so it kind of gets stretched now when it gets stretched it stretches the lens also from both ends now when somebody is pushing the lens from both the sides like it, it is something like you are sitting somewhere and somebody is pushing you from this side somebody is pushing you from that side so what will happen you will not be able to sit comfortably you will be kind of stretched from both sides that is happening with the lens the lens is stretched on both sides so it is becoming thinner so the lens is thin and as a result it has increased focal length so now you, the principal focus gets shifted here so this is the focal length now so you see the same lens it is just that the lens was set free so it was a fat lens with a lesser focal length now the lens is kind of uh, st stretched by the stretched suspensory ligaments because of which it ha it is a thin lens with an increased focal length so i hope this concept is clear that how ciliary muscles control the uh, focal length of the eye lens because controlling the focal length is very important otherwise we will not be able to uh, make an image form on the retina and if image formation doesn't happen on retina we will not be able to see anything so now here we introduce a term called power of accommodation so power of accommodation is the ability of the eye lens to adjust its focal length to see both distant and close objects now as we said that the lens can become fat the lens can become thin but there is a limitation to that also now there has to be a certain limit up to which it can be th become thin similarly there has to be a certain limit up to which it can become thick so that ability or that flexibility of the eye lens is what we call power of accommodation that means how much the lens can accommodate how much the lens can adjust to ensure that the image is formed on the retina so as we saw that these are like the two extreme conditions where the uh, thickness of the lens changes now the closest distance of an object for which the lens can focus the light on the retina that is known as the least distance of distinct vision now if you have ever observed it for yourself that if you take a book and bring it extremely close to your eyes will you be able to read the book you can't if you haven't tried it yet try it now bring the book extremely close to your eyes almost touching your eyes will you be able to read the book no so when the book is so near to you that time also you can't read it because now the distance of the object has reduced so much that the lens is not able to you know adjust its focal length so much to produce an image on the retina so the image is not being formed on the retina so there is a minimum distance minimum distance of the object for which the lens can focus the image on retina so that distance is called least distance of distinct vision that means that is the minimum distance at which you can very distinctly see that object and this distance is also known as the near point so that point where the object should be located that point is termed as the near point and for a normal eye that near point is 25 centimeters so if you place any object if you place a book at a distance of 25 centimeters from your eye you will be able to read it very comfortably but if you bring it maybe uh, some to a distance of 10 centimeters from your eye you will not be able to read it clearly however this value of near point often increases with age because as uh, a person ages the ability of the lens or the power of accommodation of the lens reduces the lens is no more that flexible as a result you would have seen that elderly people often bring a book you know they they really need to see it very closely to read it otherwise they they do not get to read it very properly so this uh, value tend to increase uh, with age so for a normal eye the near point is 25 cm and the far point is infinity that means the far point can be anywhere because we already saw in the ray diagram that if the object is far away even if the object is at infinity 
The lens can adjust itself in such a way that the image is formed on the principal focus and the principal focus lies on the retina. So far point could be infinity but the near point has to be 25 centimeters. So with this we get an idea that about how our eyes produce images of object and then how our brain interprets those images so that we can see the objects as they are. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.